they decided finally to do a spinal tap and then they found the bacterial meningitis. Um, we were in the hospital for seven days. On, she was on IV antibiotics. They sent us home um, that following week and she had to continue antibiotic intramuscular shots for three days. I at first we weren't sure whether she was hearing or not because she was used to watching things on TV and she was still dance. But then we noticed that if you made a noise in back of her, that she wasn't responding. As a result of the meningitis, she lost hearing completely in both ears. With bacterial meningitis, the cochlear or the, the part of this system that we implant um, actually bones over over time eliminating any possibility of um, the use of an implant in the future. Carmen had bilateral um, simultaneous cochlear implants on June 21st, 2010. And what's going to happen today is that we're going to take this external processor, we're going to program it for her needs, and then it will communicate, her skin and her hair will be in between, it will communicate through the skin, and it will tell this part of the implant what information to send up to her brain. It was absolutely amazing how fast everything was moving. We were completely caught in a whirlwind. We had no experience with hearing loss. We had no idea what we were about to encounter. And everyone at GBMC was extremely helpful in such a stressful process. I think the most helpful thing for us was being asked whether or not that was our goal for her to hear. I think that's really important is to make that decision and decide because it's, it's a process. You definitely have to go through, you don't want to see your child in surgery. And, and coming out of surgery, it's, it's, that was, a, as, as well as, as good a hands as we thought she was in, we still, there's still that nervousness that comes with surgery. So you, you really have to be prepared and, and want that for your child. Now we are in the process of activating her implants and teaching her to hear all over again. And we're excited about her possibilities for our future. Hello. Hey, oh. Hey. Look at those eyes. Hello. Did you miss us? Hey, Grandpa Baby. Hello, hey, Grandpa Baby. Hey, Grandpa Baby. Hello. Carmen, hi. We're going to take her to a point where she is um, close to her peers, if not with her peers. Um, but her language development will look very similar, only it will be at a delayed pace because of the hearing in, you know, information that she has been um, without for a little bit of time. Um, but we expect the same kind of things to happen. We'll work through all the developmental phases of language. We'll go through all of the auditory skill development that other children have. Um, we'll just do it now. It probably will be a little adjustment for her because the information will sound a little different. But hopefully she'll pick it up. Kids are incredibly resilient and they usually do such a great job with the language. Um, and now that she's hearing, uh, hopefully that will be a very easy task for her to pick up. I just thought it was amazing how once everything was, we find out when it happened, that, that you all were able to do something right away instead of waiting. We didn't want to wait a long time. And I'm, I'm thankful they just moved here in December. And we're from a small town in North Carolina. We didn't have this kind of capability. And I'm just so happy that she's where she is, where this is available. We felt like every day is almost more like a year without her being able to hear, and today is just so gratifying. It's, it's, it's incredible.